Hi, it's nice to see you again. Welcome back to another story with Miss Garcia. Do you belong to a family? Yes, you do. We all do. We have parents, grandparents, aunts and uncles sometimes, and even cousins, if we have aunts and uncles. But what is a family? What does that word mean? Let's take a look at the definition. A family is a group of people who are related to each other in some way and who may or may not live with each other. Does all of your family live with you in your one house? No, some family members live in their own houses. We may live at home with our parents and our brothers and sisters. Some of us may have grandparents that live with us or an aunt or an uncle or even cousins. Some of us may have aunts and uncles and cousins that live somewhere else or grandparents that don't live in our house. Families include a mother, father, brother, sisters, grandmothers, grandfathers, aunts, uncles, and cousins. So our families are big. They have lots of different members. But are people the only kinds of families? Nope. Families can also be a group of objects or even animals. In today's story, we're going to learn a little more about that. Take a look at this family tree over here. We see a child, which could be you, and the child's parents. See how the little branches connect up here to her dad and to her mom? Over here on mom's side, we have grandpa and grandma. These two are mom's parents. On this side, we have dad, and we have grandpa and grandma. These grandpa and grandma are the parents of dad. So as you see, our family tree expands and has many branches that reach out into different parts of our family. Today we're going to be reading a new story, but before we do that, I wanted to touch up on main idea and key details. This is something we've talked about many times before and you should already be experts on this. But let's read this anchor chart together. How can you determine the main idea of a text? Well, you can look for clue words that are repeated, ask yourself what is the text mostly about, Look at the title, headings, and pictures. Reread the first and last sections of the text. So, main idea. The main idea is what the text is mostly about. It's the main message in the story. If you read the story from beginning to end, it's what the whole story tells. The details are sentences that tell more about describe or explain the main idea. So the details are the little bits of information that when put all together help to define or describe the main idea, what the whole story is about. So let's get started with our story and see what we'll be reading about this week. Our story is called All Kinds of Families by Mary Ann Hoberman and illustrated by Mark Budavan. So our author that wrote the story is Marianne Hoberman, and our illustrator who drew all of these colorful, fabulous pictures in the story we'll be reading today is Mark Budavan. Families, families, all kinds of families. Families are people and animals too but all sorts of other things fit into families. Look all around and you'll see that they do. A knife and a fork and a spoon are a family. The stars and the sun and the moon are a family. The socks in the drawer and the rocks on the shore and the blocks on the floor, they can all become families. Bottle caps, ginger snaps, buttons, or rings. You can make families from all sorts of things. As soon as you're born, you're part of a family. As soon as you're born, you're a daughter or son. As soon as you're born, your family gets bigger. As soon as you're born, it is bigger by one. Eggs in a carton can seem like a family. So can a loaf 
with its slices of bread. Celery stalks or a big bunch of carrots, they sleep in the fridge with a drawer for a bed. What other things can you find to make families? Pennies and card decks and marbles and jacks? Ribbons and bobby pins, hair clips and thimbles, pencils and rulers and crayons and tacks. Bottle caps, ginger snaps, buttons or rings. You can make families from all sorts of things. Clams in the sea make a clamily family. Lambs in the field make a lamily family. Jams in their jars make a jamily family. And yams in the cupboard, a yamily family. Out in the yard, you'll find dry twigs and branches, horse chestnuts, barberries, acorns, and cones. Down at the beach, you'll find pebbles and seashells, soft colored beach glass, and ocean smooth stones. A saucer and cup can be brother and sister. A comb and a brush can be husband and wife. A plate and a bowl can be Mrs. and Mr. And so can the spoon or the fork or the knife. Your hand is a family, a family of fingers. Your foot is a family, a family of toes. And as you get older, each family gets older. And as you keep growing, each family grows. Bottle caps, ginger snaps, buttons or rings, you can make families from all sorts of things. If you are the first baby born to your mother, your mother's a mother because you are here. If you are the first baby born to your father, your father's a father because you appear. If you are the second one born in your family, someone is a brother because you arrive, or someone's a sister and you are a sister or brother the moment that you are alive. You can make families from clay or from play-doh. You can make families from mud or from snow. You can make families from paper or cardboard. Make them from sticks or balloons that you blow. Spools are a family and tools are a family and chalks for the blackboards at school are a family. Six slices of cheese or a pod full of peas, or a key ring with keys. They can all become families. Bottle caps, ginger snaps, buttons, or rings. You can make families from all sorts of things. You might say that numbers belong in a family, or alphabet letters or notes in the scale. The colors in rainbows, the words in a language, the keys on a piano, or stamps for the mail. Inside or outside, in summer or winter, you can find families for so many games. Families to play with, spend most of the day with, telling them stories and giving them names. Bottle caps, ginger snaps, buttons or rings. You can make families from all sorts of things. Make-believe families and families of people. Families of people from long, long ago. Families like stepping stones crossing the water, leading to now and the families you know. Everyone comes from a number of families. When you look backwards, it looks like a tree. People from families make other new families. The more you go back, the more people you see. Play families, real families, all kinds of families. Think of the families, the ones that you're from. Someday you'll grow up and you'll have a new family and you'll be the family of families to come. And that is the end of our story. So now you know that there are many different types of families from numbers and letters to buttons and string, balloons and silverware like spoons, forks and knives. There are so many different types of groups of things that we can call families just like our own family at home. Let's take a look at our vocabulary for this week. Say the words with me when I read them aloud. Ginger snap, thimble, bobby pin, tack, 
yam, chestnut, pebbles, pod, scale, keys, saucer. Now what do these words mean? Let's look at each of them together. A ginger snap is a type of cookie. There are many different types of cookies, just like we have sugar cookies and chocolate chip cookies and oatmeal cookies. Ginger snaps are made with ginger. A thimble is a small, tiny little tool that we use to put on our fingertips. So when we're sewing with a needle, we don't poke our fingers with the needle. So it kind of protects our fingers like a little shield. A bobby pin is something many of you have likely seen already. And we use bobby pins to hold our hair back. A tack is something we use on a cork board to hold papers up or other things. We use the tack and punch it through and it holds the piece of paper on a board. You might have seen that in your classroom too. A yam is a tuber. It's a type of vegetable, a starch, that is used to cook in many different ways. Sometimes you might eat it kind of like a baked potato. You'll eat a baked yam or you'll have it cut up and stewed. Lots of people eat this during Thanksgiving and they're yummy and sweet. Chestnuts are nuts. It's a type of nut and you see them here in this picture. They come inside of this big furry pod and then the nuts come out and you have to crack their outer shell to eat what's inside. Down here we have pebbles. Pebbles are tiny rocks or small rocks that you can hold with your hand. A saucer is the little dish that goes under a teacup so that you can set the teacup on top in case it's too hot to hold or in case it spills or you need to set your spoon down after you stir your tea. In this story, they talk about keys. And I know a lot of us think about keys as something that we use to unlock a lock or open a door. But in this story, the keys they were talking about were piano keys. And piano keys look like this. There are white keys and black keys, and each key makes a different sound. They also talked about a scale. And some of you may have heard that word before and may think of a scale that tells you how much you weigh or how much something weighs. We've seen those at the grocery store in the produce aisles where they have the fruits and vegetables. You carry them and put them inside and the scale weighs them and tells you how much you have. That's one type of scale. This is a music scale. And if you notice, the notes are going up, 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 just like a ladder. And that is a scale. The, the notes that you play in it with an instrument move up and get higher. The last vocabulary word is pod. And a pod is kind of like a little pouch that holds things inside. In this case, we have a pea pod, which is what they talked about in the story, green peas. Some of you may have eaten green peas in your dinners before or your lunches. They are delicious and very sweet. And like the pea pod, we have the chestnut pod as well. See how the chestnut comes inside of a pod like I mentioned before? So we actually have two different types of pods right here. Let's talk a little more about the main idea and key details. In today's story, the main idea was that there are many types of families. Was that what the whole story was about? Yes, from beginning to end, it talked about how there are many different types of families. Now, the details are the kinds of families. Can you remember some from the story? I'm sure you can. Let's look at the ones that I wrote down here. You can think of some other ones too. One of the details in this story was our hand. It talked about how a hand has a family of fingers. We have our hand and each of our fingers is part of that family. That was one key detail from our story. Another key detail from the story was that numbers and letters belong to a family. We see here lots of numbers like the number 6, 2, 4, 8, and we also see some letters like the letter C, the letter U, the letter S. So each of those letters and each of those numbers belongs to their own family, a family of numbers and a family of letters. These two details tell us about the main idea of the story, which is that there are many types of families. 
each of these details is one type of family. Can you think of another family from the story? How about the buttons? Or the balloons? Or the silverware next to the wedding cake? All of those were families and all of those are details too. Now, to end our story this week, we're going to work on a little activity. You're going to go to Seesaw soon and you're going to have to create your own family tree. If you notice, down here it says your name. So you'll have to write inside of the box on Seesaw, your name. Once you've written your name, you're going to go up to your dad and your mom. And you'll write your dad's name up here and your mom's name up here. And if you have brothers and sisters, you can write their names in these two boxes. See how these two boxes connect to you? That's because you three down here, or four or more, depending on how many brothers and sisters you have, are all the children of your mom and dad. And that's why this stick comes up and then touches dad and mom. It connects your mom and your dad, and it connects you and your brothers and sisters. So now it's your turn to show me what you've learned. I hope you enjoyed this week's story, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.